This is the uh, Expedition T-shirt. It's actually designed by our EPM, Sean. And the whole idea behind these, every ODP or IODP Expedition, um, there's a contest. You design a T-shirt and the winning design gets made into a, a, a T-shirt and everybody gets one if they want. And so one of the highlights of the Expedition was in fact that I said, we hope it works. And that's what this means. This is in Latin, Spiro Operator. And so you ask me, well, did it work? And, and the answer is absolutely. It worked almost to perfection. If you want to say what, what makes this expedition stand out from others uh, would be the way that it just rolled so smoothly and so quickly. Usually there's some force out of your control, whether it's weather or equipment failure. This one was incredibly smooth. It was more like a ballet in the sense that uh, everything happened ahead of time. And we ended up with so much extra time that we, we got more than we bargained for. The coring was really a bonus, right? We had planned to come out to install the observatory and to recover the genius plug. And that all went so well, we had this extra time, which afforded us to drill and collect the core samples of the fault zone, which is terrific. But we also didn't plan for that, so we didn't have the right people or the right technicians on board to analyze the core and make measurements right there. Well, the simple reason why we're back is because this is where the cores are. When we were at CN 365, we didn't have the scientists with the specialties needed to actually go ahead and, and do things like look at the structure of the core, the lithology of the core, um, you know, do the descriptions. So this is just the opportunity to do all the work that we couldn't do when we were at sea. And now we have a special team of people that includes some of the folks who are on the ship during the original expedition and then additional experts, in particular Mike Underwood, who's a sedimentologist and has a, a wealth of experience in the regional geology and sedimentology. And then Q Kanagawa is doing the same thing for structural geology. We've brought him in because of his experience and because he can take the data sets that we collect here and put them in that context to compare them with the other boreholes that have been drilled and, and so on. And these sampling parties are a routine strategy within IODP and what we do is we do non-destructive measurements on the core then we split them into a working and an archive half. The archive half is mostly for description and non-destructive measurements whilst on the working half we are allowed to take samples for shore-based studies, for onshore analyses. So we have a wide range of disciplines here in order to work on the solid core, on the pore fluids and so on. Core length is usually uh, 9 meters long and split it in the uh, several sections. In this call, we have eight sections. Then um, cutting it half like this. In some cases, we can see, uh, let me see, uh, striations like this on faulting surface and we measure these orientations too. So um, now we had the PMEC, PW and IMP. And this is the depths of 43 to 45. There are lots of different things that we're looking for. One of them is the, the origin of the sediment, where it was eroded from, and the sediment texture and the sediment composition. So there are all sorts of details in, in terms of the mineralogy and the sediment texture that relate to other studies that are being done by scientists, both on the ship and in their shore-based labs.
this is in this part of the section. We don't just sit around in our lab coats, smoking on our pipes, going, ah, you know, he's very right. Or, no, you're stupid and your questions are silly. Uh, it's more along the lines of you have an initial idea or hypothesis about you know, what you think is going on based on previous work. And then you go out there and you may find out that, yeah, it's kind of like that. Or you may actually get midway through and find out, no, it's not like that at all. And, and here's these unexplained questions that have popped up that nobody anticipated. But, but that's why you're here, because if you knew what was going to happen, you wouldn't have to do it. Well, it has been three months since we left Chikyu, and we are now back to do some of the core description and the sampling. And in the meantime, we had already a chance on a Japanese research vessel with an ROV to connect the LTBMS to the DUNET network. That was done successfully, and we are now getting real-time data into the data center of DUNET on shore. And this has scientific applications, of course, because we're getting continuous feeds of data. I don't need to arrange a cruise to come to Japan and go in a submersible offshore to get the data. I can sit in my office with my laptop, log right in, and I can pull the data. To me, Expedition 365 was one of the biggest successes within Nantrasize, not only because we installed and successfully connected the second of these really complex, sophisticated um, long-term monitoring systems, but that we also got additional core in there where we can do rock deformation testing, which is actually directly related to the response we are seeing now in real time in these observatories. Well, the major contribution of Expedition 365 is twofold. It's the successful installation of the observatory, which kind of shows the funding agencies and the world, hey, this is very doable and it's bearing fruit. And then the second part of it is by installing what is now not just a single observatory, but a second in a mini transect of two observatories because we have a sister site about 20 kilometers away and now allows us to more confidently understand and say things about uh, deformation processes and stress accumulation in the subduction zone. And this is something that you can do all the drilling in the world, but if you don't monitor continuously over time, you cannot see or record how strain is accumulating and being released. For that, you absolutely need this time series, the monitoring. And that's really a critical part of understanding earthquakes. <laughs> 